Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge Home Edition 2.0. Let's tell our stories. Produce a short film from the safety of your own home. Win prizes. And virtually attend our award ceremony. Open to filmmakers with and without disabilities who want to challenge how disabilities are viewed and inspire change. The challenge is from March 16th through March 21st. Register before March 15th at disabilityfilmchallenge.com. to the 2021 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge Meetup! Woohoo! I always have that energy because this is the what, what this amazing man has created. Uh, and I love that Performing Arts Studio West and the Meet the Biz program every year seems to have our meetup and greet up. Um, so without further ado, uh, Nick Novicki is a comedian, an actor, a producer uh, that has performed on six continents, including several tours through the Armed Forces Entertainment performing for troops. His television credits include Boardwalk Empire, The Sopranos, The Good Doctor, Louder Milk, Alone Together, Gotham, Comedy Live, Jack and Triumph, The Neighbors, Austin and Alley, Private Practice, Drop Dead Diva, and he's appeared in several movies, including Life Happens, November Rule, The Last Five Years, Boston Girls, Breaking Wind, and <laughs> Dead Ants, and the upcoming Hipsters, Gangsters, Aliens, and Geeks. He is the founder and the director of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge and as a board member of the Easter Seals Southern California, Mr. Nick Novicki. <laughs> Woo! Hey. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's so good to be, hang on. Did I, un hang on, am I mute? I'm no, unmuted. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it is so great to be here uh, virtually with you. This is an event that I look forward to all year round. Uh, you know, every year, David and, and John Piazas and one at Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz and Diana Elizabeth Jordan have welcomed uh, the film challenge and me with open arms. And I look forward to seeing you all so much. It's so crazy that one year ago, I was at Performing Arts Studio West launching the seventh annual Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Now, for those of you that don't know what the film challenge is, it's a weekend film competition where you need to have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. I created it seven years ago to try to have other people with disabilities take their career in their own hands. And I can't believe how much it's grown. And last year I was there and I thought it was business as usual and we were gonna have our normal film challenge as we always have. And then a little thing called the COVID-19 pandemic happened. And we ended up having to delay, cancel uh, the film challenge. And ultimately we relaunched it and had a home edition last year where people were able to make uh, films from the safety of their home. Well, we ended up having the largest film challenge we ever had and I am so honored that we are launching the 2021 Easter Sales Disability Film Challenge Home Edition 2.0 that's gonna be happening March 16th to March 21st. You can register before March 15th. If you're tuning in, I just want you to know there's so much amazing talent that could be a part of your film at Performing Arts Studio West. And we're gonna have more info on how you can reach out to those coordinators and those amazing people behind Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz. You could make a film from the safety of your home this year. Last year, it was a documentary uh, film challenge. Normally, we don't give you the genre until the weekend, but we made some changes this year. This year, we're giving you more time. And the most time that we're giving ever is we're announcing what the genre is 
way before the film challenge. This year, the genre is mockumentary films. So that's kind of a hybrid between documentary and our normal narrative uh, short film competition. We also have some of the most amazing prizes we ever offered, uh, including uh, $1,500 grants from NBC Universal. We got uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. We have uh, one year memberships to Film Independent, one year uh, membership to IMDb Pro, and the winning films are gonna be featured on IMDb's homepage. Plus we have amazing mentor meetings, including mentors from Viacom, CBS, HBO, uh, original um, programming, NBC Universal, and, and this is the first time I'm announcing it. We have Ali Stroker, the Tony winner uh, from our community is gonna be mentoring this year. And, and we also have just so many other amazing prizes that we're gonna be announcing as, as we continue to, to move forward uh, in this year's cycle. So please make sure to follow us online. You can see those updates. Well, today, this is a really exciting day. Uh, during this segment, basically, we're gonna screen the winning films from the 2020 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And we are so honored that we have the three winning filmmakers from those films that are here with us today. Now, normally it's so fun to be at Performing Arts Studio West together. We get to hang out. You get to see me in my ridiculous gold jacket and heckle me uh, in person. But you know what's special about this year? We have the winners that are from New York, Rachel Handler, uh, Colorado, Scott Klum, and we have Jennifer Masumba from Florida who are able to be with us here today virtually and normally that can't happen. So later on in the program, we're gonna screen those films and we're gonna to get to hear from those filmmakers about their experience. And, and this is gonna be something where you're gonna be able to continue to talk to us after and don't worry, I know it's frustrating but we're gonna get through this and we're all gonna be together in person soon once we can safely. But I, I really need to give a humongous shout out to David Zimmerman and John Piazas from Performing Arts Studio West, who have been unbelievable supporters since the beginning of the film challenge and really just do so much for the disability community. John Piazas, are, are you there? Can you come on I'm and here. say a few words about Performing I, Arts Studio West? What's, what's new? What's here. happening? I am here. Well, it's been an interesting year for everybody. Again, I'm John Piazas, uh, Director of Performing Arts Studio West, and it's just always such a pleasure to have you, Nick, in your crew and all the wonderful talent that you bring together. And yes, we do miss being at the studio with everybody, but this is a wonderful way to get people from out of town and everybody all together. And David Zimmerman, thank you so much for, for bringing us uh, all together the way that you always do with your Meet the Biz program. And just for those of you who may not be familiar with Meet the Biz, uh, it's where we have people from the entertainment industry come in and uh, they speak, they share their experiences, they answer questions, they, they are there for you guys to draw out from them the things that keep them excited and um, stimulated about the business and, and how they were able to negotiate all the things that, that performers need to, do, to negotiate to, uh, to make a successful career. And in the past, we have had some wonderful guests, including Mr. Uh, Novicki, but also the, the, the dear and recently as of late, Mary Wilson has been with us, Jamie Brewer and Jerry Jewell, and uh, Jody Amga from American Horror Story, Kurt Yeager, Norman Lear, Brent Miller, and Scott Sil uh, Silveri, Micah Fowler, Naomi Grossman, Danny Woodburn, Mark Povinelli, Santina Muha, just an absolute you know, treasure trove of talent. And we, we love bringing people together. Um, the studio is going into its 23rd year this year. So once we hit June, we will have been operating for 23 years. And we are just so proud to be involved with the uh, Easter Seals um, Disability Film Challenge in any way that we possibly can. So welcome everybody. Hope you have a wonderful time. It should be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing the films again. And, uh, and it's nice to meet those filmmakers. And so welcome everyone. Let's have a great time. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. And, and I can't thank you enough for your support. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, well, what is the film challenge? What do the films have to be? What's, what's a successful film for the film challenge? Now, again, when I started this uh, seven years ago, 
I started the disability film challenges. Let's, let's create films that have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. You know, I partnered with Easter Seal Southern California that really helped me uh, take it to the next level in 2017. But one of the big factors that people always ask me is like, well, what, what kind of film should the films be about disability? Uh, they don't have to be about disability. And a lot of times people ask, well, well what, what do people like in the films? And so we are so honored. We have so, uh, some judges, uh, we, you know, here with us, you know, John talked about all those amazing people that come out uh, to Meet the Biz and are a part of Meet the Biz. You know, we've had judges uh, with and without disabilities that are truly the leaders in the entertainment industry, um, a part of these films. And again, the films don't have to be about disability, but I don't want to tell you what should be in the films. I think it's better to hear from those judges. We have some special guests with us here today. A uh, very good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Mark Povinelli. You know him from so many TV and movie credits. Are you there, Chelsea? He's in a new huge movie. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to announce that yet, but you know, uh, very uh, small director, Guillermo del Toro is uh, behind that film. He's the president of Little People of America. He's in a much more beautiful setting. Uh, look at him out there. It looks like it's a Hallmark card here. Look at that. Uh, Mr. Mark Bovinelli is here with Ooh. us today. And do we have uh, the one, the only? Oh, he's is here. He's here. All right. The, so we have uh, a true uh, ally to the disability community. He's a uh, co-chair of the SAG-AFTRA Performers with Disabilities Committee. He's been in over 100 film and TV credits, Mirror, Mirror, Seinfeld, uh, a gazillion credits. You can, it will literally be the one hour uh, segment. So please, the one, the only, Danny Woodburn. Look at that. Here I am. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. And uh, right, so, so guys, you know, did you, you finish you guys your, your judges of, of like 12 donuts this morning. Did you finish that? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did have a nice. I love you your know, hair. I love your hair today. You look like you're an agent for silent film stars. <laughs> I, I think you might have shaved Rosie and put her on your head. Yes, yeah. that's right. I have a dog. I was looking for my toupee and I think I see it on you. What's going on? <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, we know each other a little bit. You know, yeah, this are you is working the... for Century 21 now? I'm just wondering. <laughs> That's, right. That's a heck of a gold jacket you got there. You have to That's really, right. You have to reach it's, a certain it's level. Golden of boy real estate. Golden I think jacket, it's let's right? make a deal. Oh, yeah. right. Let's you have one of those deal. little thin mics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the new wheel spinner <laughs> on uh, Price is Right. There you da -da -da, go. Da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys uh hey, i, I, I noticed thank... that in your credits there's no mention of santa buddy santa paul and santa paul That's right. <laughs> what happened you, you know here, here's ashamed, the thing you? Dan, you're, you're danny and i here. danny and i have had the chance to work together and mark as well we toured the world yeah, where was i have had the honor of working with the two of these guys possibly more than any other actors i don't know why i'm talking into this uh pen it looks ridiculous <laughs> as i see myself uh Okay. But yes, we, we have Sorry had the it. honor of, of doing several movies, TV shows, tours, stand-up comedy together. Uh, but but guys, you know, we have people tuned in from all over the world. You guys have been film challenge judges for years. Let's talk, uh, let's talk frankly about what, what do you guys like here? Are, are, can they, can you be bribed? Is a Starbucks card going to get them over the hill? Like what, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you like to see in films. You know, knowing that we, you don't, the films don't have to be about disability. And then, you know, what do you like? What, what trends? Mark, you made a film the first year of the film challenge and then hopped into the judging seat. Film. A film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Danny didn't judge it so nicely. So I decided <laughs> you can't beat him, join him. I never got my check, Mark. All right. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, what do I like to see in films? I mean, other than uh, Nick dressed up as an elf at Christmas time, <laughs> what I like to see in my films are, uh, hey, hey there, uh, Danny too. Um, no, what I think, uh, I, I, what I like to see is authenticity. I think that what's so cool about uh, the Disability Film Challenge, it's an opportunity to tell your story, to tell the, the thing that's been inside of you that you've wanted to get out, and, and there's no, almost no rules. I mean, other than, you know, the ones that Nick sets up for you, you don't have a studio, you don't have a producer, you don't have 
um, an agent telling you what they need to see. This is what you want to say, what you want to show. And so there's no idea that's too creative. There's no idea that's too unique. And there's no uh, voice uh, that isn't worth hearing. So I want to hear your voice. Can I go? Yes. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> I never know when Povinelli's done. <laughs> He's like the Columbo of public speaking. <laughs> Um, that's like a, that's like an old man reference. I don't wow. Know. No one is. got that joke. <laughs> Columbo is a fun word me. though. Yeah, it is. It's, it's got the, it's got the C and the B in there. So that's good for comedy. Um, since the, since the theme is mockumentary, uh, I would advise folks before the opening of the, of the, of the festival, um, before you start making the films, take a look at some, some classic mockumentaries that are out there. Take a look at uh, some of Chris Guest's work or um, the, the penultimate, uh, the ultimate um, mockumentary Spinal Tap, uh, Rob Reiner's film. I would take a look at things like that to give you, give you a sense of tone and style and what you might look for. And then, you know, on the disability subject, I'm, as a judge, I've always been in favor of people that don't really focus so much on the disability, that just, it just exists on the screen, it just exists in the story naturally that it doesn't that it doesn't actually dominate the theme of the of the work i like to see i like to see people talking about other stuff and then you know obviously the people with disability that are on the screen are representing as, as mark said authentically um and i think you know the most authentic aspect of people with disability is that we're not really talking about it all the time so my, my sense of, of good filmmaking in this particular challenge is to not really come down with a with a heavy hammer on the dis disability subject, but to uh, just just exist in the space the way we do every day. That's great. That's great advice. You know, and I and I think really w when you talk about uh, the challenge overall, you know, this is the eighth year, so the genres have changed, but mm -hmm. depending on what it is, you know. It, you can really, you can take, you know, you, you don't have the theme. So by the way, don't start filming yet. Don't start filming because we haven't announced the props, the themes, some of those other things. But you know, what, what uh, Danny just said is very important because you know, you don't have to focus on the disability, you know? And again, sometimes it could be a part of, you know, if, if it's a part of that inciting incident within your film, but when you look at it for each of the different years, the genres have changed a lot but there's elements that could work in different, um, different facets. And when we talk about mockumentary uh, films, we're also talking about documentary style. So you could be thinking about things like The Office, uh, things where it's like you're in that version of a documentary or, or a world that is a combination of documentary and it's documentary style. So Mark, is there, has there been anything else for you that you feel like jumps out or you're you know, seeing because you know, we have a lot of actors that, you know, this is the, you know, possibly the first time that they've ever made a film. Uh, you, you, you were uh, that in, in the first year of the film challenge, if I'm correct, this was the first time you made a film. Did you learn anything about that process? And has that changed now that you're seeing the films at all uh, as a judge? Well, uh, I think it's about, uh, um, again, it's finding the truth in your own story. And so, you know, to, to Danny's point about not focusing on disability, I think you don't have to feel like that's that's a burden on you. But at the same time, I think there's so many interesting aspects about your unique journey and um, what uh, what your experience has been. Nobody else has that same experience. So you can use that. You can lean into that and, and show us something that we haven't seen before. Show us something that that feels unique and personal to you. Because I think when you're limited by, um, you know, just a few people working on it, and in this scenario, when it may just be you working on it due to the restrictions, you know, the more personal you make it, I think, I think the more fun you're gonna have. And the more fun you have, the more fun we have as judges. Danny, do you have anything else to add uh, before? Because I do want to talk a little bit about the restrictions before we move into the uh, section of watching the films. Oh. He's muted. Danny's oh, yeah, been, there we go. Sorry. been quieted. Uh, yes. Well, you know, 
it's necessary sometimes to uh, <laughs> put a sock in it, as Nick would say. Um, you know, it's 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 going to, as Mark said, you know, focusing on your own stories. Like, what where else can you go? You know, we're in this we're in this environment where we're in isolation a lot. So obviously, it feels like that's the obvious way to lean. And so I think that's a great suggestion on Mark's part. But I also feel like this environment also forces us to be more creative. So spend some time to think outside the box in that sense. You know, what what can you create on your own? I mean, what if you made a mockumentary about uh, your yard? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> something like that. You know, just something unusual, something, uh, right? If anybody wants yard, Mark Corbinelli's address. Mocks. Yeah, Mark's yard just mocks me from afar. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's that's great advice and is you know what great, is it great advice though it is great advice <laughs> it is great advice from you you know the the best thing to do is is to go to mark povinelli's yard we all want to do that you know uh and let me tell you what as as somebody who's been a longtime friend of you danny i think we can all agree that every now and again when there is a mute button for you that can be a benefit uh for somebody else when you're trying to get through some of those talking points and when you say a long time friend are you referring to yourself because i don't understand that <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love you i love the both of you guys so you know and and, and before we get to the next section i do want to just bring up one area that you know mark did say look there are going to be restrictions and and as i said this is a home edition so again because we the safety of everybody from all over the world that is the top priority so these are making films from the safety of your home again but we are allowing something different which we used last year uh that you can use pre-shot uh archival and footage and photos that you have the rights to. So remember, if you have some of those things and you can put that together, you also can't use music that you don't have the rights to, music that we have, but you are gonna be able to do that. You can use sag after talent, but you're gonna have to follow the sag after protocols. Um, you know, again, uh, Mark Povinelli, Danny Woodburn, they can both be bribed. They're both on Twitter. Uh, they love too. Starbucks, I hear. I don't I was, know. I was gonna add, Nick, too, that, um, you know, for those that, that maybe can afford, um, this you can you can like get yourself a one month membership on storyblocks storyblocks.com is i'm not advertising for them at all um i'm not a shill Ovenelli, unlike you i um i would say there's a, there's a lot of great sort of stock footage and weird things that you can pull from <laughs> how's that coffee <laughs> <laughs> mm, <laughs> you know jerks. weird things that you can pull from storyblocks um there's sound effects all kinds of special effects uh, it would be just great to explore that. Um, even if you don't use it, I would, I would suggest exploring it because it might spark some ideas too. That's great advice. That's great advice. But remember, when you're exploring any of that stuff, you got to make sure you have the rights to it because- That's what Storybots is. You get the rights to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. The, uh, thank you that's guys. That's why I brought it up. I that's love it. Said. I love it. You see, this guy's thinking ahead here. He's got it. He's got it right on the chalkboard behind him. He's got that, you know. All right. I can't thank you guys enough. Seriously. Uh, no, you can't really. <laughs> yeah. Well, we one more time it. then. Thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> Danny Woodbird, Mr. Mark Povinelli. Good luck, everybody. Can't wait Looking to see your films. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, now we are getting close to that portion where we're going to watch this our winning an anticlimactic exit. We're still here, both of us. <laughs> we said goodbye, and you left this up here. <laughs> don't, don't hey, I got my go. hands up high. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know how to bring you in or out, so it's not, it's not me. Don't uh, make me go. <laughs> well, you, we are getting to that point where we're going to get to see our winning films from 2020, um, and we are also going to get to hear from those winning filmmakers. Uh, and I, I'd like to uh, bring up a longtime supporter. She's the uh, Performing Arts Studio West's own. Uh, she was the best winner of the 2016 Best Actor of the Disabil uh, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And also she was nominated for Best Director because she hopped into that directing seat. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for the one, the only, Diana Elizabeth Jordan. 
Hi, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I do have tips on how to drive Danny and Mark Poganelli. So email me later if you want to know how. Oh, seriously. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, you know, God, the film challenge, what, what Nick has done with the film challenge is really given you an opportunity to, to manifest your dreams. It really is. That's what it is, the opportunity. If you've never acted before and you've always wanted to, here's an opportunity. If you've never directed before and always wanted to, here's an opportunity, especially because of the home edition. And my number one advice would be, don't worry about winning and don't focus on winning, but focus on creating something that you want to share. All right? And that's to me, and this is an opportunity you have. You know, films have gone on to do some wonderful things, slam dance, other film festivals. But this is an opportunity for you just to learn and create. And the only way you learn and create is to try. Not to think about it, not to sit at home and think about it and wonder, oh, could I do it? But just try. Just do it. If you have an idea for your documentary at home, your family, your friends, just give it a try. Right? Because if you're wondering if I could do it and you don't do it, it's the same answer. So just try. That's all you can do to give it a try. And um, I'm really excited. I, I've been a part of the um, film challenge since the second year. I've had some wonderful opportunities. Um, and I also discovered my love for directing film. And I'll tell you again, when I was going to direct I Can, I had no idea if I could, honestly. I knew I was an actor. I didn't know if I could direct the film. And I did. I had my wonderful mentor and friend, Corey Reader, who's a great friend of this program and has had many award-winning films. And so it was just a great opportunity to learn. So I really encourage you again to give yourself an opportunity to try. Pursue that dream and try. So speaking of pursuing dreams, I am I have the pleasure of introducing the three winning films that were a part of last year's film festival, the 2020 winners. I'm going to read the bio of each of these incredible artists who created films, and then we will go to their films, and then there will be a, their discussion panel. Um, Following. So, and what's really cool about this is, like, sometimes when I get to do this, I get to hang out with my friends. So, the first woman I'm going to introduce was the winner of the awareness campaign last year, Rachel Handler. Rachel is an actor and filmmaker based in New York City. She won the at and Under Underrepresented Filmmaker Award for her short committed on the Sundance June Monthly Challenge Award for her script, The A Does Not Stand, Doesn't Stand for Accessible. Since joining the disabled community, she found a passion for writing, producing, and directing, advocating for inclusion of every project she creates. Her writing credits include the award winning short film, The Housewarming committed the banish and authentically me which which um won the respectability 27 second film talent competition and screen and taxi cabs throughout New York City which is super cool that's super cool Rachel that's awesome handler TV handler TV acting credits include on order at the at the U Goliath New Amsterdam, Bull, and NCIS New Orleans. So, and again, we will see her um, film, How Much Am I Worth, which again was the awareness um, winner for the 2020 Film Festival. Next step, 
we have Jennifer Massimo, who was the winner of the best film last year. Jennifer is a musician, writer, and director. Her award-winning film was The Fish Don't Care When It Bangs. Um, she began making videos on YouTube in 2016 and became interested in making films after working on a and &E The Employables in 2017, where she was featured trying to find the real world employment um, of an autistic person. She also runs a successful YouTube channel, Rebranding Autism, with over 31K subscribers and is a member of America Mensa and plays a key, key keyboard for her church's worship band. Jennifer grew up in Ann Arbor, Massachusetts, and now lives in Florida, where she stays busy creating both new films and music. Her debut album, You, Can, you That Saved Me, was written and recorded in a small cabin during the months of quarantine lockdown. And again, we are going to be seeing her award winning film, The Fish Don't Care What It Rains, um, in a little bit. And our final film we're gonna see is Autism Ability. And Scott um, Plum was the first best editor when the last year um, he to the film talent also as the editor of editor award. And Scott Clum won that award. He's a filmmaker based in Boulder, Colorado. Scott found his passion for filmmaking, pursuing his talent both professionally and in his free time. Many of Scott's stuck um, projects are recommended, which include his film Autism, One Man's Journey, a film about being diagnosed with autism later in life. Between this film and the short film Autism Ability, Scott's work has been in over 12 film festivals all over the globe. Again, Scott also won the award for his editor in 2020, each this year's disability film talent. Scott is a well-known filmmaker in the sky industry, having worked, um, having his work featured on ESPN and the major, oh, ski, my, my bad, that's ski, I'm sorry, and the major um, ski movies and level one production on Fire Media and Theory 3 Media. Some of his film partners include the ski industry, have been through the um, Copper Mountain, Powder Mountain, Winter Park, Tall Tree Productions, Lion Skis, Smith Optics, and Shred Optics. Scott continued to grow as a filmmaker, enjoyed being on panels and public speaking. It's always looking for new opportunities and has big plans for the future. So again, his film is Autism and Ability, and we're about to see all of these three wonderful films right now. And um, I think we're really in for a beautiful treat, a beautiful art, and a beautiful way of seeing people manifesting and accomplishing their dreams. Okay. No, that's fine. I understand. No, I don't need help with anything else. Thank you. I'm Rachel. I lost my leg in a car accident eight years ago, and I just had a surgery a few months ago and got this bill in the mail right after I lost my job due to the pandemic. Apparently, they were my anesthesiologist. I didn't realize that I would have to choose between being awake for intensive leg surgery or paying my rent next month. You know, when I got that bill, I felt like a criminal. It made me feel like I did something wrong when all I did was have a life-changing surgery that allowed me to walk again. And now I have a bill for $1,165.62. My name is Jaleesa Graham. Um, I'm a model, I'm an actress. I'm a mom and a foster mom. Um, and I was born with a limb difference. So I was born uh, missing the lower half of my right arm. 
my name is Denise. Um, I've been an amputee for a little over 10 years and I currently live in Oslo, Norway, though I lived in the United States for the first 32 years of my life. My name is Andrea. I am a registered nurse here in New York. Uh, I happen to be one of the first registered nurses who uses a wheelchair to get through uh, nursing school here in New York City. I do get pains from um, over usage in my left hand actually. Doing activities and things that I do to make up for this, you know, the part of my arm that's missing. So I'll have shoulder pains, I'll have back pains, and it's mostly just from leaning extra. After um, I broke my leg for about 17 months, we tried a lot of different things, but uh, ultimately the best solution was the amputation of my leg. I haven't had a wheelchair from insurance for over the last seven years. And a chair for me costs upwards of nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Thankfully, I have great friends that will fundraise and crowdsource. But if I didn't have that, and for the rest of the community that doesn't have that, what do we do? Do we just say, okay, well, good riddance, okay, put you in a corner, stay home? The process of me actually getting my prosthetic was a very lengthy process. It was stacks and stacks of paperwork that I had to do and fill out. Um, and I don't know, ridiculous questions to me about why I would need an arm and why this is important. I'm gonna give you an example like, well, can you brush your teeth? And if you can, well, then you don't need, a, you don't need another arm. When I met my now prosthetist, um, I think he was appalled at the condition <laughs> of the foot that I had that I was walking in. I just had like chunks of carbon fiber like flying out when he took the leg off and he's like, how have you been walking on this and for how long? And why have you not had it fixed? I said, well, I'm American <laughs> and as an American amputee, you just kind of learn to, you know, take it really like all the way to the end. In 2010, I got uh, deathly ill. I was diagnosed with osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection. I was septic, so it was in my bloodstream. When I was in the hospital, these doctors were coming to me, they were saying to me, um, I'm doing it to myself. I'm making myself sicker. Um, I'm not following their regimen, so therefore that's what's implementing me being sick. I feel like sometimes when you have a certain insurance, people aren't treated um, equally or like their pain or what they're going through is not taken as seriously. So he said, okay, well, you know, we're gonna order you a new foot, we'll get you set up. And he's like making this list and I'm starting to panic a little. I, I was just getting a little nervous because I'm like, I don't know like what this will cost me. And he said, the Norwegian community believes that these things should be provided for you. So that's that. And I thought, what a concept. <laughs> I just like truly broke down in tears because it's, it's just been, like, I, I didn't realize how stressful it's been since the beginning. It's insane to me that we're so low on the totem pole for care. And when we do need to come together, we're, we're silenced. We're yeah. silenced because they're like, money is more than what you're worth. So then where's <laughs> that money going? Let me know. Because when I look at the stock markets, I see that your company's still high, which means that you're still bringing in money, which means that I should be able to get what I need. But no. Your hold on me has changed Though you were tough, I'm strong enough So let it pour on me Though the water weighs me down Keep it coming, I won't drown I'm protected from the lightning And the thunder won't hurt me now Hi, I'm Gemma Simba 
If you search the internet, you'll find I'm the only one in the whole world with that name. That's a lot of pressure, because if I mess up, it's all on me. I'm an artist. I love to create. I'm also disabled. I have autism. This is the story of how those things combine to make one unrepeated me. As I've gotten older, I found that I love to garden. It's remarkable to watch a small seed grow into a beautiful plant yielding watermelon or pineapple. Huh, <laughs> pineapples. That's a sensitive topic around here. Two weeks ago, I had an almost fully ripe fruit atop my pineapple plant. Let it ripen on the plant, all the garden articles said. So I let it sit, even though I knew he was out there watching. That fat raccoon that terrorized my trash can every night. He made his move and stole my pineapple, devouring the whole thing. Blimey! Blimey! The nerve, I thought. But then I realized something. He left me the stump which contained the seeds I needed to grow myself another pineapple. I was down, but I was not out. I once was a seed. I laid buried for years, covered in layers of problems. There was obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety, social difficulties, and loneliness. I wanted so badly to break through and soak in the sun, but it wasn't yet my time. So I waited. And just like a seed, when the right elements came into play, I had my breakthrough. I have lived in facilities since I was 15 to help manage my self-injurious behavior and impulsivity. Some of these places were all right. Most weren't. I got worse instead of better until life had just about devoured me. Then I moved to a new facility in Florida. I was replanted. In this new place, I was allowed to grow. I fed my talents. I surrounded myself in music and taught myself new skills, like how to create a vlog, which is kind of like a video diary that the whole world watches. If there is one thing I know is true, is that we all learn in unique ways. And for me, art provided a better view of myself. Watching myself on camera made me painfully aware that I wanted to fix my face. I only had one expression. No wonder why people always thought I was mad. So I worked on different faces. Now I'm a comedian. <laughs> then I wanted to make friends because I've been lonely most of my life. So I joined the worship team at my church. We created together, thought together, sang together. Soon we were hanging out. And before I knew it, I was actually socializing. Over time, my forms of expression have continued to diversify. But throughout it all, my deepest passion is music. Music taught me to channel my feelings into a form that connects with people. Before, when I started to get frustrated or upset, I usually ended up hurting myself. But with music, I could take those abstract feelings and write them into a relatable tune that everyone could get behind. So what does my autism mean to me? Well, I've always been autistic, so I don't know anything else. Just like fish, they're already in the water. So they don't care if it rains, they're already wet. I don't mind being autistic. It's been the vehicle that defines my unique voice. Without my disability, I wouldn't be who I am today. I'm Jen, artist and pineapple grower. So let it rain on me. I'm just out here swimming. Torn and broken heart. All the fish don't care when it rains. They're already wet. It's just another day for them in paradise If paradise is what they've always known And I can't change where I've been I'm already hurt It's just another day for me in paradise If paradise was knowing not to My name is Scott Klum. I am a filmmaker, a skier, and a friend.
At the age of 23, I was diagnosed as autistic. I try to focus less on it being a disability and more on the opportunities and strengths that have shown through my autism. Had I been born 20 years later, it would have been much easier to get a diagnosis due to the increased awareness around the autism spectrum. However, this has helped me develop my support system of family and friends, including Martha, whom I would not have met without my diagnosis. Autism has made it so I view the world differently than others, and I use filmmaking in my everyday life, even during the pandemic. Three, two, one. Years ago, autistic people's special interests have been referred to as obsessions. I like to think of my special interest as a passion and career, which showcases my strengths. As a result, it has turned into a profoundly effective coping mechanism. Autistic people have the ability to hyper-focus on things for a prolonged period of time, which has benefited me when editing film for hours on end. Autism has introduced me to many friends, passions, and experiences I would not have had if I were neurotypical. My name is Scott Klum. I am a filmmaker. What gorgeous, gorgeous films, just beautiful films. And we have the wonderful uh, Hope Simon is here interpreting back for another um, wonderful talk with Rachel Handler, uh, who was the winner for Best Awareness, uh, How Much Am I Worth? Uh, we have Scott Plum, Autism Ability, Best Editor, and we have Jennifer Masumba. All righty here. There we go. Hello, Rachel. And we're also having Nick Navicki, of course, join in with us. Hello, <laughs> Scott. Yep. Hey, everyone. Good to be here. And Jennifer. we have Jennifer. I love it. Let the, I tell you, the I look forward to this every year, um, the film challenge, because such art comes out of this. And one thing that Diana said earlier that really stuck with me, um, she said, when you are doing this, do what you want to share. Have it come from here. And when you do that, it's just so powerful. Um, this is a question to all of you. Uh, why do this? Why be a part of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge? Rachel. I, the, the first thing that came to mind is because it's fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I mean, you get to stretch your creative muscles and sometimes it can be stressful. You're like on Sunday, 
and it's crunch time and you don't know if you're going to get your film in on time and it's like you're pulling your hair out of your head but the process of it all getting to collaborate with other people or explore new skills yourself is just beyond rewarding and it's so fun and I mean, I always go into it thinking like, there's nothing to lose. There's everything to gain, but there's nothing to lose. So just go for it is what I always say. Like, just go for it, have fun with it, be creative, stretch yourself, think outside the box um, and start, you know, training now. Start really thinking about like what kind of stories you want to tell, who you want to work with um, and start preparing right now so that it's super fun and not as stressful when March 16th comes. <laughs> right. Yeah. How about you, Scott? Um, like Rachel said, it's a lot of fun and you have nothing to lose. And I mean, also for me, I just have met so, even though it's been virtual so far, there's so many great people in the disabled community and I've just connected with so many people because of this. And I mean, I didn't really know about this challenge till a week or two before um, the actual event last summer. And I'm like, well, that could be fun. I've been struggling with the pandemic, so why not make a video? Mm -hmm. And before I knew it, I was a finalist and then I won it. And I mean, it doesn't matter whether you win or not, but like if you do win, it's a game changer for your career. I've made huge connections at HBO. I've gotten to have interviews with Academy Award winning editors. Um, I mean, and my connection with HBO just continues from that one meeting. So they're helping build my career as a film editor. That's wonderful. Jennifer. Well, I just think um, why should you answer me? Because it's like they like we're saying, it's really fun and honest, honest, honest. I didn't even think I was gonna be a finalist, let alone win best film. I was like, well, I'm just gonna do my best and make make a Jennifer a Jennifer approved film, and and if I win. I don't know if I'll win, but at least I'll know one way not to win a film festival if I don't win. I just like put it all out there and I just had a lot of fun. And um, I was just, I couldn't wait to do this challenge and I can't wait for this year either. It's just fun and you get to meet lots of people no matter what happens, you get to meet lots of people in the community and it's great. How about you, Nick? <laughs> Mr. Creator. Well, you know, I definitely, uh, I'm, I'm a little biased, but I feel like, look, this is, this is an opportunity for you to make a film, get amazing prizes. Uh, you know, we, we screen at film festivals around the world, you know, from laptops, grants, as Scott said, those mentor meetings, which, you know, these are opportunities, but the best thing is you don't have to be a finalist or a winner. We've had some of the biggest success stories come from people that just acted in a film or worked behind the camera on a film and, you know, now the industry is, is watching these films. So don't don't think about, hey, I just got to win it. And if I don't win this, it's it's not going to be just make a film for the challenge. Get it in. Even if you can't, for some reason, it doesn't work out for you to be able to take part in this year's challenge. Just keep creating, keep making content, because, you know, it, that's the best way for you to create opportunities for yourself. Well, I have to say, you know, I've been behind the scenes helping out here and there throughout the years. And always enjoyed that. And he kept on saying, when are you going to do a film? When are you going to do a film? And last year, I finally went, okay. I, I just have this feeling I have to do a film. And we did Honey Bunny uh, with Blair Williamson <sighs> and Susie P. Ballard. And I have to say, the experience of doing it, and I'm getting a little verklempt here, <laughs> was so rewarding and so amazing to, you know, you just jump in. And once you're in it, you're just like, flying through it and, and enjoying it and then it's done and you have this piece of gold and it's not just your film but that extended family of what the easter seals disability film challenge is so that's i mean it's so so amazing um one thing to let's say rachel have you seen any changes in the healthcare system since you made the film um, 
I mean, it's been a little less than a year and we have a new president now, but a lot of the healthcare um, and health insurance that I'm dealing with is by state. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, we're working on developing how much am I worth into a feature film and we're applying for grants and trying to keep up to date on what's happening. But, you know, um, a man named Creed Bailey, who's the head of security at the White House, he lost his leg uh, and had to uh, raise funds for um, medical treatment and uh, converting his house so it was uh, accessible for him now that he has a disability. And he went to GoFundMe to do that. So obviously, like, he's like a huge position at the White House and he still has to turn to crowdsourcing to raise funds to meet his medical needs. So there's a ton of work to be done. Um, and it's it's gonna take a while, you know, I, I'm not sure of any specific changes that have happened um, besides extending um, the uh, Obamacare, uh, the health coverage. Um, so you can apply a little bit later if you still need coverage. Um, yeah. Well, you're, I mean, that film is so important for everybody. I mean, that we all need to be taken care of. Um, so yeah. I, I applaud you. And I'm so glad that you're planning to make it into a feature. Um, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Scott, where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, your film was visually stunning. I mean, I mean, I was just, I watch it over just to, just to fly with your imagination. Um, I mean, I've always been a pretty creative person, but I think just originally I used to be known for making ski films for ESPN and major ski movie companies, even with Warren Miller and stuff. And that taught me how to edit to the music and just edit artistically. And then I got into documentary filmmaking with my film Autism One Man's Journey, and I I found a way to blend my artistic ability with cinematography and editing with documentary work. Yeah. And I decided to do the same thing with autism ability. And I just really wanted to focus on the positives that autism has given me, which is my talent for filmmaking and my creative eye. And I don't know, just, I, Part of my work is always wanting to make something visually stunning. And even, even if people have told me when they see like my film reel and stuff that they're not just watching my filming, but watching the videos is actually like an experience. Like it's stimulating to them and they're just captivated by it and it pulls them in. So that's just always kind of been something I really focus on. And when I um, made Autism Ability, I think I edited for nearly 24 hours in two days to put that all together in three in a three minute video. Just everything is to the beat of the music and stuff like that. Well, it's uh, again, just gorgeous. I mean, all of these films are, are so powerful and so gorgeous. Jennifer, how, yeah. since you made this film last year, it's been a year now, how has your life changed since you created your film? This opened up. I met all these people that I never knew were out there. I didn't know there was groups and things just for disabled artists and actors and filmmakers. And um, I've just been given opportunities. Um, I, I won amazing prizes. I, um, I had a mentorship and I'm continuing. I was actually, my film was accepted in, to the Florida Film Festival, which is a, um, a, a very good festival. And it's up for a grand jury prize, which is Academy Award qualifying. I was like, what the heck? So if I hadn't done this challenge, I wouldn't have that film to share and enter other places. And um, I'm just, I'm ready to take a step further, work on my actual technique and things because I like telling a good story. I have lots of stories. And I find them everywhere. Someone just says like one line and I'm like, that's a story and that's a song and I write it or something. And then, so I'm always finding these stories and I want to tell them in a way for, for people to feel it in their heart. So, um, 
it's opened up just even my mind into like, oh, I can do these things. I can do this. Whereas before I thought maybe just my friends and family thought I was cool, you know? <laughs> Again, I mean, all of these films, I, I can't wait for the films for this year too to come out. I'm just like excited. Um, the thing, Nick, about this festival is some people see Easter Seal Disability Film Challenge. But this festival is open to all filmmakers. Why, why is it so important that this challenge is all inclusive? So that's a great question. So, so in order to take part in the film challenge, you have to have one person with a disability in front of or behind the camera. But again, you can have uh, that person with the disability be the actor, the director, the editor, a collaboration. And myself, you know, I've been now in the entertainment industry 20 years. I get hired by other people that hired me. But so we're working together, both people with and without disabilities. So really, it's about us continuing to build with each other. So it's inclusion and it's about uh, having people of all different uh, disabilities and uh, people with and without working together. Wow. Yeah. Well, one thing too, I mean, I, I've done casting in the past and uh, I've had many different hats. And um, if there's anybody, let's say if you need, and this is the past years too, if you need, let's say a certain actor or you're thinking, I can't reach out to somebody, but who would they be? I mean, I am open if you want to email me at the david at tastudiowest.com and say, hey, I, I, this is what I'm looking for. You, you probably have the connections right in front of you, but I know I was talking to Jamie Brewer the other day and she wanted to be here, but she even said, hey, I wanna be a part of this again this year, the Disability Film Challenge. I think she pretty much does it almost every year. Um, so just to let you know, I am available for that. Um, and to give you a shout out, you know, David is is been a casting director and such a supporter of the disability community for so many years, uh, helping provide opportunities. So for this film challenge and beyond, uh, you know, going to talent, you know, between David, Diana, Elizabeth, Jordan, and John Piazas at Performing Arts Studio West, I mean, you really have a treasure trove of talent. Um, and now knowing that you can use this talent from all over the country because there's ways to do it remotely and uh, find ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, this is family. This is family. It's the film community family. So, thank you all. And Nick, thank you. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for you, this, this wouldn't have grown into a, a forest like it has. Been. Well, thank you. I, I can't thank you guys enough to uh, to all the winners. Let's give a virtual round of applause to Rachel, Jennifer, Scott, uh, rock stars who in in this uh, you know virtual world there is a benefit that we could all be here together to celebrate, to watch your films, um, you know, and I'll be here virtually. You know, this would be a tough thing to do. Uh, I know we will all be there together. Uh, again soon, but this year we're still in a virtual world. Uh, our film challenge is a home edition. The award ceremony will be virtual. You're all invited to attend, to watch, be a part of that. Uh, go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com to find out more information about the film challenge. I highly encourage you to watch all the films that have been created for the film challenge. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can see the last seven years of films, it's hundreds of films created by starring, featuring authentic disability. Uh, we've all seen everything on Netflix. Let's watch some uh, films from the challenge. I can't thank you all enough. Anytime you guys have a question, uh, hit me up, uh, disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. 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 Thank
count of yeah. three, we're all going to say disability film challenge. Hey. All right. Okay. Two, Two three, 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 three,